no one had worked on mask in the movies in a very long time and of all characters to whom these ideas might apply just academically the joker is one of them my attitude was very practical it was if you have somebody of that caliber they'll have a 12 hour turnaround you've got to do the makeup in under two hours whatever it is you have to have a practical approach to how you would do a character like that I saw my job very much as whatever this guy turns up with, I'll be augmenting. And I think in the first discussions, Tim's view was exactly that, you know, that we would see where we went. And he didn't dismiss any approach at all at that stage. He was very open. It's like when certain actors say, I'll find my character when I find his wardrobe, you know? It's like, and I kind of understand that. It's deeper than just a surface thing. With someone like the Joker, you have a, a childhood image in your head white-faced guy, green hair, manic smile. But beyond that, when somebody actually confronts you with the issue of, OK, you're actually going to do it, I've got to give him a ridiculous smile, I've got to paint him white, I've got to give him green hair, but I mustn't dilute Jack Nicholson at all. And that was really the hard part of the brief. He did have the final say. I did have a very early meeting before anything happened with Nick. Creatively, it was very specific. You know, in other words, I wanted to get something more of the elongation. You know, when you look at the drawings, his hair is not bright green. You almost see it as a lighting effect. You know, you're at the beginning. Everything's always brand new at a movie. And Tim was feeling that this would come through the lighting that it wasn't too bright, too green, more of a Clarabelle than a Joker, you know. And I've said, oh, you know, Tim, look, you know, I don't agree with that. You don't want that level of clowning. Don't worry, I'll try to be humorous. He is the Joker and funny. And we did the test on the wig, and immediately he saw too bright. Changed the wig, much less green area, you know, much less fright wig element, more, you know. This was also very revolutionary at the time. The chemistry of it was very specific, and they were very inclined toward the creative result of it. And we had a lot of talks. One of the ironies of my life is I'm allergic to spirit gum, you know, the, the basic unit of movie makeup. I did one life cast as you would normally, with his face just relaxed in a normal position, and one cast where I asked him to pull the most extreme grin that he could pull, which was quite extreme. Molded these various items, produced casts of him, smiling and not smiling, that I could then sculpt on. So I then went back and started trying to sculpt a smile that was always there, but needed him to smile behind it to take it to the full extent. And then sort of stood back from them, painted them, and sort of looked at them and thought, well, what do I think? At what point in this row of faces do I lose Nicholson? because anything beyond that point where I lose him, I should just dismiss now. Because if you're doing a prosthetic makeup, you're gluing bits on somebody's face. And wherever you glue those bits, you are camouflaging the performer. You know, he's got to sell through it. He had to have makeup on and take it off and, and get down to a second layer of makeup. This is a scientific problem. The Joker paints himself flesh-colored to hide the fact that he's been stained white. And then you read that he wipes at his face and all the brown comes off and revealing the white joker underneath. And you think, how the hell do you do that? We paint him with the product we use all the time, which we call Pax Paint, which is basically an acrylic adhesive that is mixed with paints. And then we put food grade silicon oil all over his face. And silicon oil has the property of nothing sticks to it. We then stippled with the sponge a very weak flesh-coloured base coat of grease paint, which was literally sitting on the oil, so it was quite a paint put on and he couldn't touch it. And then we airbrushed and painted shading into that. Bob had wanted to take that kind of, that elegant gangster that was in his very sharp pinstripe suit, and when he got sort of dipped in the acid, turn it into the sort of zany version. You look fine. Jack's known for coming to London to have suits made. I didn't ask. We used a Savile Row tailor to make these amazingly well-crafted suits, so he was so happy, really. <laughs> 